Welcome to Artmind. Today we are learning the Mixer Brush tool in Photoshop. The Mixer Brush tool is located here and its shortcut is P. Think of the Mixer Brush as a real-world brush which you use for watercoloring or oil painting. It can use the color from the foreground, but unlike the brush tool, the Mixer Brush tool cannot use the foreground color right away. Think of the foreground color as a color pot. Right now we have chosen the red color pot, but the Mixer Brush cannot use it yet. So if I draw with the mixer brush, we get nothing. Why? That's because we haven't loaded the brush or dipped the brush in the color pot yet. Now that we have selected the red color pot in the foreground, how do we load the brush with the red color? If we go up to this icon, click the down arrow and then load brush. So the brush is now soaked in full red. Now we'll be able to paint. In a real world scenario, we would often want to clean the brush, right? We would want to dunk the loaded brush into a water pot. Now how do we achieve that in Photoshop? We go to the same icon and then clean brush. Now that the brush is clean, we can paint no more. There are two more ways how you can load colors on the brush. Right now the brush is unloaded even though we have a green color on the foreground. How do I know that? Because this box is transparent. This time we directly click on the square. You can either select the color pot from this color picker or you can sample colors from an existing image. I'll sample this red and there we go. The brush is now loaded with red. I'm gonna paint. So this is our brush tip and this is just a squiggly paint. Alternatively, we can alt click on the image and sample colors. Let's sample this purple here. Here we have the tip of the brush and the paint. But what if I want to sample a gradient and then paint with it? For that, we'll have to go to this drop down and then uncheck load solid colors only. I'm gonna sample this part over here. So now, this is our brush tip and we can also paint like so. We can also sample shapes and then paint. Like for example, we have this star. So I'll take my brush and then alt click. But it does also sample the background along with the star. We don't want the background, so I'll hide the background and then sample the star. Let's get the background back on. So this is our brush tip and this is an awesome stroke. Next we want to look at how much we want to load the brush with the paint. First I want to go with 51% and I've already selected the color pot in the foreground. So now I'm going to load the brush with 51% yellow. Let's paint a stroke and as I'm doing so the brush is running out of paint. So with 51% paint load we can draw only so much. Although I've dragged the brush till here we have got no paint. Why? Because the brush is empty, it has run out of paint. You can also see that the paint load is showing empty over here. Now I'm going to take the load percentage down to 1%. Bear in mind, when I had 51% load, we had this much of paint in the brush. But since now we have only 1% load, only this much of paint is gonna be loaded in the brush. And so the paint is gonna run out much sooner, right? Let's load the brush with 1% paint. And now if I paint, you can see that the paint is running out much sooner. Let's have load at 100%. Load the brush. And now the paint will almost never gonna run out, so I'm gonna stop here. The load amount differs as we change the brush size. This is a small brush and I've loaded 24% of the brush with this yellow paint. So the small brush can carry this much of paint at 24%. But if we have a bigger brush size, let's see what happens. Let's load the brush. Now let's draw and see the difference. So 24% of this big brush will carry more paint than 24% of this small brush. Similarly, not just with brush size, everything also varies with different brushes altogether. Next, we're going to see load the brush after each stroke. So we have a brush loaded with red at 50%. I'm going to paint a stroke and the brush is empty. It's absolutely ridiculous to go here every time to load the brush after you have emptied the brush. So solution to this is this option. Doesn't matter if the brush is totally empty or partly loaded. Now Photoshop is gonna load the brush every time we finish painting a stroke. 
So we emptied the brush but it's auto loaded again and we can go on forever like this. I'm going to show you another thing pertaining to loading brushes. First I'm going to draw with 80% load and it has run out of paint. So now if I try to draw we have nothing. I'm going to load the brush again but this time I'm going to stop way before it runs out of paint. So the paint still hasn't run out yet, meaning the brush is still red. So if I go again, it's going to paint with the rest of the paint. And now the brush is empty. Next, we're going to study flow. Flow is the percentage of paint used per brush tip. Let's have a look at 100% flow. But you can't really see the individual brush tips, can you? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to brush settings and then increase the spacing of the brush tips. Now you can see each of the brush tips at 100% flow. I'm going to lower the flow value now. And there you have it. The brush is only going to let go of this amount of paint with each stroke of the brush. Not only that, if we now paint with the brush and then come back without clicking off, it will coat itself with another layer of paint. Next, we're going to discuss weight percentage. Think of this as painting with watercolor. I have water with me and the color with me. A 0% wet brush basically means that we are not dipping the brush into the water before we load it with the color. So the paint is gonna be dry-ish and is gonna run out soon. Let's get the brush wet just a tad bit. Then load the brush. A little wet about 4% is alright. Now with this wetness, you can see that the brush can go on for much longer. The wet amount not only has a role in painting but also in mixing colors. Suppose I want to mix this yellow with this red. How do I go about it? I load the yellow and then mix. But it's just painting plain yellow. There's no mixing going on. But why is that? That's because the brush as well as the whole painting is dry. How do I know that? Because the wet value is zero. You at least need some amount of water in the brush to achieve any kind of mixing of colors. Furishab also believes this. You can see that the mix option is grayed out as long as the wet value is zero. But as soon as I add some amount of wetness, the mix option opens up. Which means now we can mix colors. I've already cleaned the brush and loaded it with yellow while you are not watching. I'll tell you why I did that in a moment. So now I'll mix the yellow with green. Loaded the brush with yellow again and then mixing with blue. Let's load the brush with red. And then mix that red with yellow. First we're going to look at the quality of mixing at 100% wet. Now if I reduce wetness, there's going to be less mixing of colors. I'm going to load the brush with yellow. And now if I go ahead and try to mix, you can see that it's not mixing so much. We have green loaded over here. And then if I go ahead and mix, this is the result. But what if we don't want to add any color and just mix the existing colors? For that, we just need to clean the brush. And now it acts as a true mixer brush tool. Next, we have got mix, which is essentially the ratio of the loaded color over here and the color on the canvas. I'm going to load a random color, let's say yellow. Now, whenever the mix value is less than 50%, more of the loaded color will show. So I'm going to grab the mix slider and push it down. Now I'm going to go and mix the yellow with this circle. And you can see that it's mixing all right, but we have more of yellow than of red. Now suppose I want more of the red. I simply go and take the mix slider over 50%. I've already loaded the brush with yellow when you are not watching. So now if I go and mix, we have more of red than of the loaded yellow. Now any color that we sample from the canvas also qualifies as loaded color, right? So let's sample and load this blue. Here we have it. First, let's have a mix below 50%. Mixing blue with blue is pointless, so I'm going to mix with red. So we are getting more of the loaded blue than of the canvas red. Next, I'm going to go the other way above 50%. But let me quickly load the brush again. Now we should get more of the canvas red than of the loaded blue. Next, I'm going to show that mix and load has no effect when it's a true mixer brush. By that, I mean when there's no loaded color. First, we'll have a mix of 0%. I'll mix these two circles. 
Let's go for a high value of mix. And we can see that there's basically no difference. Now let's see the effect of load. We are at 1%. Let's mix this set. I fast forwarded and cleaned the brush. I'm going to increase load now. Let's mix this last set. And both the mix are same. The wet percentage does have a role in mixing even though there is no loaded color. Now we have a wetness of 2%. This is how the mixing looks. I'm gonna go for a very high wet percentage. And there's way more mixing this time. Flow also has an effect in mixing when there's no loaded color. Right now we have flow at 100. So the mixing is very strong. Now I'll reduce the flow amount. And the mixing is very soft now. Now I'll tell you why I was loading the brush and cleaning the brush while you were not watching. First I'm going to load the brush with this yellow. Let's mix the yellow with this red. Now you'll see what happens when I don't clean and reload the brush. Well, you can see that there should be no problem. Yellow is loaded here. But this preview is not always entirely accurate. Imagine the real world scenario. You mixed yellow and red with your brush and the brush now looks something like this. Now without cleaning this brush, if I dip this brush in yellow again, this is how the brush will look. So if I use this brush to mix with green, let's see what we get. So you will obviously get traces of red and yellow in the green mix. Likewise, if I proceed to mix the blue color, we'll have traces of the previous colors. If you don't want these residues of colors, we'll have to clean the brush every time after mixing. We can do that manually after each mixing over here, but it's absolutely ridiculous to go there every time to clean our brush after we mix colors. Photoshop has a workaround for this. We have to click this option, which is clean the brush after each stroke. So now Photoshop is gonna automatically clean the brush after we mix colors. Since now we have a clean brush, I'm gonna reload the brush with yellow. And to repeat this loading process automatically after each mixing, I'm gonna click this option too. So after each mixing, Photoshop first is gonna clean the brush automatically and then load the brush automatically. So now I'm gonna mix this loaded yellow with green. It's perfect, we just have yellow and green. Since I let go of the mouse button, what's gonna happen? It first cleaned the brush and then loaded the brush with yellow. So now if I go and mix with red, we are just gonna get yellow and red and no residual colors. So since I let go of the mouse, the brush got automatically cleaned and loaded. After the blue mix, we just have yellow and blue. These three options that we have, wet, load and mix, they also have presets. First we have custom, where we do our own thing. You can change any of these three, I'll just change load. Let's use the dry brush preset. You can see the changed values here. So it has wet at 0, load at 50 and mix is deactivated. You can try all these other presets but I'm going to use wet heavy mix for now. New values again. We can also make our own custom mixer brush. Right now we have a round brush and I don't want any color to be loaded. I have wet at 100, load at 1, mix at 0 and flow at 100. Let's see how this does the mixing. I'm gonna go to the brush settings and then reduce the roundness. So this is how it looks now. I'll add some scattering to the brush. So now we have got this kind of effect. I'm gonna reduce the size a bit. There we go. And maybe I want to reduce the flow percentage as well. So now our final mixer brush looks something like this. Now what if I want to save this brush? I'll go to brush settings and then click on this plus. I'll call it mixer brush. Since I want the brush size to be saved, I'll check this. And to record the options from here as well as here, we'll check the next option. This opens up a new option to include color. Since I don't want to record any color, I'll leave include color. Now let's check if it's properly saved. I'll go to brushes. You can see here's our mixer brush with the icon on it. But first I'm going to select a different brush to show you that indeed it has recorded all the settings properly. I'll select this one. Now let's try the mixer brush that we have just created. And it is exactly how we had it. 
So this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.